evening again to uh, to everyone. Uh, it's another beautiful time. And yeah, we've already got some students coming in, so we just hope to start to find any other person can, can join us as well. Um, today we're gonna be having a special master in the house, uh, especially me personally. I respect him a lot, Captain Caleb. The one of the few captains with our with the PhD, <laughs> and um, it's going to be really um, giving us some good lectures on cargo um, operations. So with that, I will say, uh, Captain Caleb, please, the floor is yours. And please feel free to ask anyone any question. And they will also want to ask you some questions when they have questions. OK, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you. Really. Thank you very much uh, for having me in this session today. Our time, uh, my name is uh, Caleb Danladi. So I'm currently a uh, Mori master with uh, Chevron Nigeria. So I'm also a PhD researcher with uh, University of Plymouth, but I'm not researching on bulk cargo. So I'm researching on uh, ports, operations, and uh, efficiency. So this evening, we are going to talk briefly about carriage of uh, solid bulk cargoes. So as you are all aware, uh, solid bulk cargoes are quite dangerous cargoes. And uh, quite often, at times, you tend to get questions from oral examiners and also from your SQA about uh, solid bulk cargoes. So even though if you look at the global statistics today, the number of bulk carriers are reducing. But still, the importance of carriage of store, uh, the importance of safe operations involving solid bulk cargo cannot be underestimated. So, at the end of this uh, lesson today, we should be able to identify different types of uh, solid bulk cargoes that are transported by sea, the hazard associated with uh, solid bulk cargoes, and the safe carriage of solid bulk cargoes. So I think when I was doing my chief mate, that is one of the questions I got that I should try and explain the hazard associated with carriage of coal. And as you are aware, coal is one of the solid bulk cargoes that is being transported by uh, bulk carriers, which is quite uh, dangerous because one thing is uh, some of the risks associated with transportation of coal involves uh, depletion of oxygen you know, reliquifactions, you know, sometimes it can cause continuous combustion. So uh, it's very, very important for us to know those procedures that you need to take, particularly when it comes to uh, your aura, safety is paramount. So not being able to answer questions related to that, it might lead to a failure. It doesn't have, you can't really fail on rules of the road alone but also on some aspect of safety of bulk carriers as well. So generally, uh, I'm going to skip this section because of our time. Normally, I wanted also to have an interaction regarding how important are uh, solid uh, bulk cargoes to shipping. So I'm going to skip this particular aspect. So when we talk about bulk cargoes, we talk about a ship transporting a huge amount of bulk cargoes by sea. Typically in the picture, you can see uh, a Panama bulk carrier. So gradually today, we have different types of bulk carrier. We have Panama, we have Super Panama, we have the sway size of uh, bulk carrier. So as the world is changing and with economy of scale, the size of the sh of ships are also changing. Uh, you are quite aware of what happened recently at Suez Canal, where whatever given ran aground and also caused a heavy traffic that lasted for up to a week. So now when you look at, at ships are growing, the risks also involved is quite growing. So we just have to work towards eliminating our such risk. So it's not only today that we have seen growth in big ships. As far as 1986, the Honda heavy industries they built a 364,767 dead weight tonnage uh, vessel called the Bedstart. 
So it has about 343 meters long and 65 meters width with a draft of 23 meters. So that is mo much more like a VLCC. So just like we have VLCCs, and also we also have similar size when it comes to bulk cargoes. And when you have a big ship like that, you should know that there are a lot of risks associated with it. Grounding, there should be a structural failure when there's inequal distribution of cargoes. It can lead to incident when some of your cargo are liquefied and cause cargo shift. So it's very, very important for us to understand uh, this carriage of bulk cargo. So before I proceed further, there is an IMO publication called International uh, Maritime on Solid Bulk Cargo, IMSBC. It's one of the reference points for solid bulk cargo. It's very, very important because sometimes in your oral exams, you will be asked to give some, to list publications that are used in loading solid bulk cargoes. So one of the most important one is the IMSBC. And secondly, the other one is the cargo security manual, which we are all aware. So cargo security manual contains all the securing arrangement, how the cargo is going to be stored over there. And one of the most important one is the code of safe working practice for merchant seamen, you know, which gives you all the safety regulation, risk assessment, safe working practice on board, how to be able to conduct uh, operations safely. So, now we are going to look at hazards that are associated with solid bulk cargoes. So what are the hazards? If, uh, if you have any question, you can stop me as we go on, please. So uh, uh, what are the hazards associated with solid bulk cargo? The first one is uh, high density. As you are aware, solid bulk cargo like steel, they are quite heavy in nature. So. Because of that, they tend to possess a physical characteristics of uh, high density. So take, for instance, you have a small box and you put a high density of steel in the center. What will happen at that point is going to hog. You're going to have a form of hogging. And when you put high concentration of steel at both ends, what will happen is going to suck. So it's similarly, when you are loading uh, solid bulk cargoes in bulk carrier, so the weight have to be equally distributed. If you load it, tend to have high concentration at the center, you have a hogging and at the side, you have sagging. So it's uh, very, very important because it causes structural uh, damage to the ship, you know? So it's very, very important that we handle solid bulk cargoes with cautions. So still on uh, high density, high density can lead to a structural failure. Once from the picture you can see, the cargo is more of one side. So you can expect to have excessive stress on this particular bulkhead. I know what are the consequences of excessive stress. It leads to a uh, structural failure, you know, which in turn can lead to a heavy catastrophe on the vessel. So when the cargo is not evenly trimmed, when you have maybe you are loading grains, so you have to trim the cargo equally to be able to avoid this high density. You don't have to keep them on one side to cause excessive stress or to cause hogging and sagging. So it's very, very important, you know, that uh, we treat these solid bulk cargoes with caution when it comes to the density. So you can see from the picture of below, a bulk carrier broke in half and sank while loading. The reason because there's a high concentration of cargo in the center, which caused it to sag. You know, so as a result of sagging, it, it's uh, the bulk carrier sank while it was loading. So you can now see how why it's so important for us to know how to handle solid bulk cargoes. If you don't know how to handle solid bulk cargoes, you are going to end up in a situation like this. And as you are all aware, the certificate we are getting is not a certificate for tankers or it's unlimited to different types of operations. So you should be able to demonstrate to the examiner that you have a very good knowledge of how to handle uh, bulk carriers. Okay. 
So another uh, danger of solid uh, bulk cargoes have to do with uh, cargo shift shifts. You know, cargo shift is one of the biggest thing it has happened. Uh, we have lost a couple of bulk carriers because of this, because once you don't load it properly, there's an issue of uh, cargo ship when the vessel is rolling or when the vessel encounters uh, bad weather at sea. So there's tendency that uh, the cargo will shift. And you know, when the cargo shift, the consequence is sometimes the vessel is going to sink or the vessel is going to capsize. And you know that bulk carriers have a very, very poor maritime safety record because of all this, you know? So you can see if from the picture, if the way it is being loaded, if you don't trim it very well, you know, uh, it comes up to the peak, you have to trim it. Otherwise, when there's heavy weather, it's going to shift and it's going to cause an issue. So you can see a result of a cargo shift, a typical result of a cargo shift from a Panama uh, bulk carriers. So when incident like this happen, it can lead to injuries, dead, and so many investigations. So as a result of this particular incident, that is what makes IMO to come out with this IMSCBC. So there are a lot of regulation when it comes to uh, solid uh, bulk cargoes, a lot. There are different guidance that have been provided by international organizations like Intercargo. So when you go to website like Intercargo website, you will find a guidance on carrying of bulk cargo safely. These are just, you have to understand that they are just guidance. They are not mandatory regulation. Apart from the, uh, the international uh, maritime solid bulk cargo scoot, which is compulsory because it's incorporated as part of SOLAS. So the other ones are just uh, guidance and guidance and guidance for safe uh, operations. So it's very important for us to trim and level uh, solid bulk cargoes. Otherwise, you are going to develop what we call angle of repose, as you can see, as you are all aware of angle of uh, repose. So all bulk cargoes must be trimmed out horizontally. If you don't trim it horizontally, you develop this angle of repose. And once you develop it, when, there's, when the vessel is at sea, and you know the stability requirement for solid bulk cargoes, you know, so you can, there's high tendency that you have a serious, serious stability problem, especially when you are loading cargoes like grain. You know, you have to have a very, very special consideration for this angle of repose. It's very, very important because if you don't trim the cargo very well, you develop an angle of repose, which will in turn cause a cargo shift when the vessel uh, encountered uh, heavy weather. So here, this is the modern cargo trimming machines, you know, that is used to trim uh, cargoes in, uh, in bulk carriers. So another hazard, which is a major hazard with solid bulk cargo is about uh, reliquification, you know, uh, liquefaction of cargo. So normally some of this cargo can actually turn to liquid and migrate within the surface. You know, when you are loading some cargo full of uh, possibly even the grain, grain itself, sweat. And when it's sweat, there's a form of reproduction. You know, coal also exhibit such kind of characteristics and they are going to migrate to the surface. And what happens when they migrate to the surface? Fertilizer also exhibit such type of characteristics. So when the vessel move, you know, you are going to have a, a shift from one side, which in turn will affect the intact stability of the, the vessel. So you can see how liquid migrate to cargo surface and then it cause a uh, cargo shift. So still on the uh, liquefaction, you know, you can also see that you can develop a rapid list. Sometimes you can even go to angle of law because what happened is uh, the refraction of cargo changes the state of cargo to liquid. And then the cargo will be flowing from different states. There will be a huge gap, a free surface effect, you know? So, and you know the effect of a free surface effect. When you have a large free surface effect, it's going to reduce your GM, which in turn is going to affect the intact uh, stability of the vessel. So it's very, very important. There are precautions 
that you take while loading this uh, solid bulk cargo to avoid reliquification. Some of the guidance are being provided by uh, BIMCO. You know, you must be able to have free circulation of air. It all depends. And then there are different cargos have different way of, uh, you have different way of handling different cargos. You know, for instance, the way you handle coal, you know, there's a uh, publication that deals with carriage of coal. So you have to consult those cargo security manuals while loading this particular cargo to avoid the risk of reliquification. So you can see, for instance, now you are listing from port to starboard. You can see the cargo and you can see the flow state. You know, the ship is going to develop a serious list due to the repulsion of cargo, which in turn, it can lead to a vessel being capsized. A lot of bulk carriers have capsized because of this. If you go to MAIB website, there are a lot of reports you know, about bulk carriers, you know, that capsize due to a uh, flow state of cargo, which of course, because of this large uh, free surface effect. For example, in the next picture, you can see this bulk carrier. That's what leads to their capsize. So you can see how important is this for us to understand the physical uh, and then the hazard, you know, of handling solid bulk cargoes is very, very important, you know. So another hazard is uh, gas production, very important. Uh, coal, for instance, you know, coal produce uh, methane. And then also they also produce poisonous gas like carbon dioxide, which depletes oxygen. So uh, there is also a precaution for handling these uh, coal cargoes. You know, uh, you will be able to have some sort of ventilators to be able to remove the gas on a daily basis. You have your portable gas meter, you know, to be checking the atmosphere in the morning and in the evening. So all these guidelines are being provided in cargo security manual. And then before you load that particular uh, cargo, you know, the shipper is going to provide you with information about all the hazards associated with coal and all the safety precautions. So like I say, one of the most important safety precautions is uh, ventilation. Ventilation is very important and you have to keep checking the atmosphere. You know, as you are aware, coal is quite poisonous. It produces carbon monoxide, which affect the red blood cells. So that is why it's very important when you are in those ships, you have to move with gas meter. The atmosphere must be tested and conducive before entering the cargo hole. And, you know, you have to keep checking the atmosphere at a regular interval, you know. So it's very, very important. So another one, you know, aluminum uh, so, uh, phosphate. That's what you use to produce uh, pesticide and sometimes uh, some sort of uh, fertilizers, you know. So very, very important. This sort of uh, chemical, you carry it in bulk state, but they now use it for pesticide. It's very, very dangerous. You know, whenever it reacts, you know, in the atmosphere, it tends to release phosphine gas. And you know what phosphine gas cause? Phosphine gas tend to cause a lot of heat, you know? So you don't even need to have any source of ignition. It, it can cause an auto ignition at about 90 degrees centigrade. And that in turn can cause explosion in, a, in a bulk carriers. So you, if you look at it, not all tankers are quite dangerous, but even bulk carriers, if you look at historically, they have a poor maritime safety record and they are more, more, dangerous than tankers is a way of give and take, you know, because of the risks of, the have risks of explosion, you know, the have risks of uh, developing angle of list. And uh, you know, when a bulk carrier is sinking, it sinks very, 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 very fast. So it's very, very important for us to know the characteristics of the particular cargo that we are loading. So you can look at it now. This is coal cargo. This is a cargo tank. So now, you know, very, very important, the methane gas tend to come up. Like I said, ventilation is very, very important. After loading, as soon as you sell from the port, you start ventilation. There are different means of ventilation. There are mechanical ventilations, 
and you also have some sort of uh, manual ventilation where you just open it and the air free flow depend on the wind direction at that time. So you also have to comply with this uh, solid bulk uh, cargo court, you know, they provide you with a full information on how to take care of solid bulk cargoes while uh, you are on the way. Okay, so still on, uh, as we discussed earlier that coal also produce uh, carbon monoxide. So it's very important that you check, you know, the atmosphere to ensure that it's not rising, okay? So another very, very, uh, another hazard that is associated with solid bulk cargoes, particularly let's say coal, you know, is uh, they have the, you know, they have the ability to, for this self heating, you know? So sometimes uh, they generally develop heat on their own, you know? And when they develop heat on their own, this methane gas is there. And then as the heat keeps developing, it's going to lead to a state that is going to cause an auto. Another uh, hazard associated with uh, coal uh, has to do with uh, corrosive. You know, as you are aware, cargoes such as uh, cement, fertilizer, sulfur, you know, a lot of them, all these cargoes, uh, particular characteristics, you know, that can cause a uh, uh, corros uh, corrosive atmosphere. Even if you are carrying cargo like salt, it can cause also corrosive atmosphere. So it's very, very important, you know. So you can see now, uh, once you must have a means of draining, you know, as it's going down, you must have a means of draining. So bulk carriers have all uh, these uh, means of draining you know, cargo built up in bilges, you know, sometimes this uh, sulfuric acid condition may develop in bilges. So it's very, very important for you. You need to test the bilges. You need to pump out the bilges regularly, you know. And if you go to the BC code, there's a recommendation on the acidity level, the pH level, you know, of all these cargos. The one that is considered safe and the one that is considered uh, unsafe. So as you are aware, there's another one. If you've been to China, you know, and uh, a lot of ports in China today that handle uh, solid bulk cargoes, you will confirm to me that this hazard of dust is associated with it, you know? And uh, a lot of solid bulk cargoes like grains, they cause a lot of dust to the environment. And these are high, dangerous to uh, humans because uh, they can be, ex why I say they can be explosive to humans is because of, you know, the health implication, you know, large number of it can also cause cancer. So it's very, very important, you know, that uh, we take uh, a safety precaution while loading grain cargo because of the dust associated with uh, grain cargoes, which can cause a serious health problem like cancer, lungs infection, and a lot of it. So I've discussed about the corrosive. So the other most important aspect is the oxygen depletion. So a lot of crew in bulk carriers have lost their lives, a lot. You know, there have been issue of a bulk carrier called the Saga Rose that happened in Southampton. They lost their life because of entering into an enclosed space, which was as a result of oxygen depletion within the cargo space. So, you know, you look at an example is a uh, rusting of a steel swap. So when a steel swap is being rusted, what it does is it tends to produce carbon dioxide and absorb oxygen. So if you enter that kind of cargo hole without testing the atmosphere, you know, it can lead to a serious fatality. So it's very, very important that while loading these solid bulk cargoes, we tend to check which of them has oxygen depletion uh, hazard, you know. So some metals also concentrate and some grain cargoes also deplete oxygen in, cargo, uh, in the cargo tank, cargo hole, I mean, you know. So it's very, very important. Also, when you look at where you are loading coal, coal also have that tendency of uh, 
oxygen uh, depletion. So it's very, very important. You can see from the example of the steel swap, you know. So what, what happened now is the space has to be adequately ventilated. You know, you have to continue ventilating the particular place, you know, because a high number of crew have died. You know, somebody will just say, okay, go and inspect this. You will just go inside without testing the atmosphere. So that's where code of safe working practice for merchant cement is very, very important because it has a detailed section about enclosed space entry, you know, what are the procedures, risk assessment and everything involved. So it's very, very important. So uh, we have come to the end of this uh, section now. I'm quite aware it's uh, supposed to be a one hour section, which uh, Captain Tayo. So I just leave the floor for questions. So over to you. Uh, good evening, Captain. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, I want to ask um, um, the call that we are talking about. Is it the one that is a byproduct of uh, uh, wood, or is it the one that uh, is extracted in pure states? And um, um, I also want to ask them, um, just like we know, uh, the wood, the timber, uh, absorbs moisture when it is being transferred, which sometimes causes cargo sweat. And so do we have, um, do we have this um, um, tradition or do we have these uh, attributes with the coal uh, you just talked about? I just wanted to maybe make some little okay uh, thank okay uh if i may understand you are asking about the type of coal so that's a natural coal is not natural. the coal from the firewood okay if the natural coal that they use for a lot of gas uh and power stations particularly okay. in countries like china you know a lot of them still depend on uh coal india bangladesh you know for powering okay. of their power plants. So that's the okay. kind of coal that I'm talking about. And when you look, that's a, it's more like it looks, when they extract it, it's like, it looks physically like the one for the wood, you know, but it's okay. totally different, you know? Okay. So that type of coal is more dangerous than the one that you use the firewood okay. to produce all those coal. So it does a carousel of oxygen depletion, but for coal, when you talk about cargo sweat, so yep. there's cargo sweat is not associated with coal, it's associated with grains. Okay. You know, what's associated yeah. with coal is called uh, liquefaction because sometimes coal can actually go into a liquid uh, stage. Okay. You know? But when it talks to about uh, uh, cargo sweat, it's mostly related to uh, grains and sometimes sulfur can also uh can okay. also sweat yes okay. yes thank you you're welcome any more question Okay, I'm quite aware uh, during uh, some oral exams, like uh, a colleague of mine, when we are doing our master's, then he shares. So one of the questions that popped up was, uh, you know, what are the safety precautions you take while uh, loading a bulk carrier, you know? And then they also asked him to list uh, all the publications that are required you know, before loading a cargo, you know. So it's very, very important uh, for us to know all the hazard before you be able to uh, list all the precautions, you should be able to know all the hazard associated with uh, solid bulk cargos, you know, then thereafter you can be able to uh, list all the necessary safety precautions that should be taken you know, but if you look at in the rank of hierarchy, oxygen depletion, cargo shifting, 
structural damage, a lot of bulk, that is really, really affecting a lot of uh, bulk carriers today. And even though a lot of them have all this stress monitor, but it's still a serious issue, particularly when you are carrying uh, steel, you know, and iron ores. So, you know, it's a serious issue. So when we talk about the cargo sweating, also it happens with uh, steel at times, apart from grain cargo. So it's very, very important. And also those publications, it's very important for us to know which publication you need to consult, not only cargo plant. So there's a small book that is published by uh, UKP and I club. So it gives you a detailed, you know, hazard associated with uh, coal cargoes, particularly. It, led, uh, it shows all the dangers that uh, you need to know, you know, and then uh, when it talks about methane, it talks about, uh, you know, oxygen depletion, safe heating, carbon monoxide. Uh, so it's very, very important. You know, if you look at that publication, it's, it, it will give you a better understanding of handling of bulk cargoes. And if you also go to a marine guidance notice, you know, so there are some uh, MGNs and, uh, that talks about uh, solid bulk cargoes, in particularly uh, coals. So it's very important. So sometimes they can be able to ask you that question, what kind of publication do you consult? So it's very important. Thank you very much, Captain Donaldy. Um, <clears throat> thanks for this beautiful class. I have to say um, to everybody listening that I've known Captain Donaldy since 2002. So it's just 19 years ago, not too long. Um, and we were in Maritime Academy of Nigeria all together. He was my year senior. So, um, and I think we moved to Warsash at some points together. So it's been a journey of um, of growth. So I really appreciate uh, Captain Dunlady for taking the time today. He reached out to, you know, to say he has something to contribute as well. Of course, he's you know, full of wisdom and all that, as you know. Um, he's a researcher, so a PhD. So for everybody listening, uh, don't just wait on your COC. Uh, think about a master degree, think about a PhD, uh, you know, something. I like law. If you can like ports, somebody can like something else. So guys, please be motivated to to hard ball. Uh, Captain Daladi, thank you very much for this. We appreciate it. I would like to uh, maybe take a bit spin from from this. Uh, another part of the oros is the safety of the crew during cargo operation, crew cargo loading, especially and offloading. So yes, we should understand that there's ballasting involved in cargo operation as well, uh, don't forget. Uh, and they might go simultaneously. Some ships have a plan whereby they do it automatically or for some reason, and some you have to do manually. But everything uh, has to work together. Um, also, when there's movement of uh, cranes, movement of, um, you know, pipes or horses, you know, there's trips for those working on maybe tankers whereby they pass overseas and all that, trips for, um, you know, what safety precaution is required on a vessel. If you're working on like on an LPG, you might need to have more of the EEBDs on your ship. If you're working on offshore vessels whereby there's always lifting going up and down, guys, your PPE is always very handy. Keep it handy. Um, I have seen operation offshore and in ports whereby probably the container was not well closed. Uh, and when it picked, when they picked it up, something fell or there was uh, a pipe stuck in between the container and during pickup, it fell down. So guys, whatever you do, stay clear. Uh, and as officers, you also have to consider the safety of your own crew. Uh, so even if you're on the cargo control room or you're on the bridge, uh, it's not just to take coffee. It's also for you to look out of the window and use your bed view opportunity to take care of your crew. So there are certain things uh, because you are on 
the job, you're not in the job that you can see easily and they don't, the guys on deck will not see. Uh, sometimes they don't like it when you tell them, but it's only the person that is alive that can be angry, you know, or that can complain. Uh, they feel, sometimes they feel they, they know what they can do already, but uh, they don't see the cargo coming from the shore side. You've seen the cargo coming from the shore side, you know, and all that. So it's a teamwork, cargo operation. Uh, sometimes cargo operation can be very more risky than sailing itself. Uh, because again, you have external people coming in. Okay, uh, your ship, you know your ship better. Uh, the stevedores, the all ports guys, the superintendents, the inspectors, the surveyors, <laughs> you know, and all that. Uh, but your the priority is your safety of yourself and your um, crew uh, as well, especially when you're on watch. And if you're off watch, you're having a smoke outside. Or you're just having some exercise. Uh, don't have the idea of you know I'm not bothered. It's not my business or something. Uh, if there's an accident, it will concern you. You know, the ego shock everybody. So guys, um, please, 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 safety first. Okay, uh, during cargo operation, I think it's very important that I stress this. And uh, your import does not mean that's the end of it. It's actually the beginning. The factors is because there are visitors come in and you they are you're responsible for them as well. That's responsibility makes a deck officer, you know, is responsibility. So please uh, let's have that at the back of our mind. Any further question on this? Any further question for Captain Dalladi? I think uh uh Tari, in addition to that, what you have said, uh one of the key aspects, if questions like this pop out during orals, is very, very important for them to include the intact stability requirement for bulk carriers. So one thing you need to say, okay, I'll ensure that uh, the vessel complies with intact stability of uh, bulk carriers because that is part of SOLAS. And anything that relates to SOLAS, you know, is a kind of a pass and fail question. So it's very important you know, for you to be able to list that because there's no point taking all those safety precautions when the stability requirement is not being met. So you have to meet the stability criteria of loading bulk carrier. So if you go to SOLAS, it's there. So there's a damage stability requirement. Also during your stability, you might have been taught. So I think bulk carriers have a special stability requirement from the normal stability requirement of other ships. So it's very important. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, boss. I was just going to go to that, that everything is interwoven. Uh, for those that will be sitting for SQA, you understand that you'll be writing two exams. One of them is called navigation. And navigation consists of everything that is not stability. The other is called stability. And stability consists of everything that is not navigation. <laughs> All right, so that's the easiest way I can uh, 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 just explain those two exams. And so it's all interwoven. Uh, you can't, uh, as Captain Caleb rightly said, you, you can't do cargo operation without considering stability. And if you remember what I said yesterday, start, uh, last time, stability is a love relationship uh, because I'm a man of law, you understand? And solid metal, not liquid metal. Uh, is the relationship between your point of gravity, set of gravity, the buoyancy, metacenter. So, you know, uh, whatever you want to do, you need to make sure you are within the safe limits. Know the uh, the limits. I have sent that in the group. Uh, one of the notes talks about the stability requirement, ball cargo, other ships, you know, and all that. Um, you are going for the exams. I've done my own. You are the one going for yours. You need to know all these things offered and because they are all related. So even before the cargo comes in, Ask, the, um, ask question about it, try and get to manifest. I understand in the offshore industry, you get the manifest after the cargo has been loaded. <laughs> uh, it's not a good process. It's better to get it before. Uh, but most of the guys will tell you, oh, you know, uh, they know what they want to do. You go into different fields, especially for guys offshore. Uh, they have going to different fields. They're going to Apple, uh, Edina, uh, this one, that one. 
you know, uh, yeah, you know, so yo, this different things, and they want, they know where. Also, your shit uh, depends on how you can approach it. So, but at the end of the day, calculate a stability report before you leave port. It's a requirement anyway that you should fill your official logbook with all those requirements, so you know what your draft is, you know what uh, your GMs are. Uh, because uh, if you leave the key and you go to angle of loan, you know, what are you going to explain to yourself? You know, your certificates, basically. So, guys, um, stability, as Captain Kilev said, we've mentioned this before, it's all interwoven. Everything is interwoven. Now, if you're thinking about the cargo, affects your navigation, uh, where are you going to pass? What's going to happen to your cargo sweat? Do you understand cargo sweat? Uh, ship sweat, cargo sweat. Go and read about these things, guys. Uh, the type of cargo you have. Also, another very important cargo is radioactive cargoes. Uh, if you're carrying kind of radioactive, what is the requirement for radioactive cargo? It's very small, but what's the requirement? You could go to prison if you don't. <laughs> uh, radioactive would not likely affect your stability because they are they are not in big uh, septic carrier in big quantity. But it can affect your freedom. You know, you can spend some time. Uh, in prison and also you're endangering life you you know people's life as well so guys please uh everything is not uh, and the fact that you do reach routine that's another pro uh, thing i think uh captain killer will agree with me that um the fact that we do something often enough we sometimes just think you know we take short corners we cut corners or we get complacent that's the word uh that's when accidents happen you know, um, you also don't forget the water you're taking for your consumption or you're making affect your stability, free surface movement is treated as a cargo and all that. So, you know, it's, it's, I know it sounds like a lot, but it's a lot. And I cannot, um, I wish I have a maybe a better way to say it, but it is, and uh, it is what it is. So guys, um, again, I, Thank Captain Caleb. Uh, if there's any question, guys, please for him in or uh, for maybe in future, send the best question to the group. If you want to ask a question, you can ask it now. If not, send your J JJ. Do you have a question? Okay, yes. I, I'm just wondering about something, sir. Um, Captain Danladi, is are you you? There is um one of your slide. Um, uh, I, I I I. Hello. I, yeah, go ahead, DJ. Okay, sir. So, as one of the, the, the slides, there is a picture of the vessel that has, uh, like, you know, excessive waste. I think uh, due to cargo ship or so. Uh, we don't pray for such thing, but I'm wondering how can that be corrected? Uh, if it can be corrected at all from the vessel, so I don't know. Because this is a solid cargo. Now, thank you. So, Captain Caleb, I think if you can help us go back on your slide a bit, I think there's a there's a picture of a ship that due to um, cargo shift, if I'm right. Yes, yeah. Uh, I think he has a question on that. If how okay. can it be how can it be corrected? Okay, which one? The one that this one? High density. Yes, no. no, no, this one is the pure acid. This one is that is one that is a. Uh, this one? Uh, yes, something like that. Okay. Uh, uh, we don't uh, pray that uh, something uh, like this happen. This is a cargo shift. So cargo shift is totally different from uh, angle of uh, law. There are two different things entirely. Yeah, so I this is the I shift of it. cargo to one side, which is caused by uneven distribution of weight. So when a situation like this happen, very, very important, you need to check your stability to ensure that uh, you have a positive stability. It's not like you are suffering from angle of law. You need to differentiate whether it's a uh, list or law. So what, if it is an uh, evil distribution of weight as a result of cargo shift, the alternative to correct this one now will be ballasting. You have also have cranes on board where you can open. You can also shift the cargo gradually to the opposite side, move weight to the opposite side, but ballasting is the first one. But if it is angle of law, so it's a different thing entirely because at this stage you have a negative, 
GN. So, you know, that means you need to put more loads on the lower side to be able to, uh, to bring the, uh, the G, you know, below M, to be able to have a positive uh, stability first. When you have a positive stability before you can distribute the weight equally. So in situation like this, there are things involved. You might remain here, but this one is very dangerous. You know, bulk carrier sinks very easily. So you might also require for salvage, you know, under the salvage rule. You know, you can also require for salvage. You can also require for talk assistance, but you have to make sure that you use all available means on board first. But the most important thing here is for you to establish whether you are suffering from angle of lull or angle of list. And list is as a result of improper distribution of weight, while lull has to do with uh, the negative GM. So from that, then you will be able to correct it by moving loads. In bulk carriers is very important. So we don't even want this thing to happen. That's why you have to trim the cargo properly. You know, we don't really want this thing to happen. It's been happening, you know, but we don't want it to happen. So those are the ways you can be able to uh, eliminate a situation like this. Are you clear you. about it? Bro? Yeah, thank you very much. Sir. Hello? Hello, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. So yes. any other question? Thanks for that, Captain. Uh, any question, please? Uh, any question? Any other question on what you've heard so far? Oh, don't be shy. Don't be shy. It's better to ask the question here. There's no stupid question. You cannot ask your oral examiner question. No. <laughs> ask now. You know, for my for my masters, I shoot myself my, in the foot at the point. So the examiner asks me about what kind of stress, you know, whenever, when a vessel is in port, is loading in port, I should be able, I should tell him the type of stress that the vessel uh, and, uh, tend to encounter in port. So I was trying to say sagging, hogging, he now said, okay, give me paper. I should say I should draw sagging, a ship that is sag, a ship that is hauled, uh, hog, and all those things. So it's very, very important also for you to know uh, some of the pictorial diagrams. For instance, why I'm saying so in a situation like this, you should be able to draw and demonstrate to the examiner that you know the position of G, position of M, and all those things. You should be able to demonstrate that you know the difference between angle of law and angle of list pictorially. You should be able to demonstrate that you know the intact stability requirement of both carriers and you can demonstrate it by picture because if you check the MCA syllabus, it's clearly stated there. So some things like stability and safe operations of vessel, uh, you can easily fail your orders. It doesn't mean most of us don't work on bulk carriers. I've never been on a bulk carrier, but you know, you need to learn it. You need to understand it because your certificate is uh, unlimited. Yes, yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for mentioning that. I should also say um, examiners are used to, you know, putting you on a ship that you've not sailed on <laughs> sometimes. Uh, they just ask you, uh, we've not sailed on. And for those that have been offshore, understand the uh, stability requirement for offshore vessels. Uh, remember that you can have green seas on your deck. Uh, so please think about it uh, very well. I, I I agree with you, Captain Caleb, on having a pictorial diagram. I think it also helps uh, the candidates to understand it better. If you can draw it, you can explain it in your own words, uh, be romantic about it if you like. Uh, I think it stays better and it shows the uh, understanding of this. So I really do agree with you on this. Uh, and again, orals is, uh, is like an interview. Um, so you want to tell the captain that you, you can be his chief officer or his second officer or, you know, as a captain as well. So if you cannot, if you're finding it difficult for words, be confident enough to ask for a piece of paper, a pen, and draw it. And it's just showing your understanding. So, you know, so don't be, uh, I think, thanks for bringing it up, uh, Captain Killer. So thanks for that. Draw it. Or metrology, you're having a problem with talking about it, 
draw it, label it, compass, do the same thing. Stability, do it as well. Do it. And practice makes perfection. So what you've learned today, don't keep it to yourself. Uh, go for evangelism, you know. Let's, uh, go for evangelism. You guys should be doing contributing offering and tie to this group. Go for evangelism. Go and share it with somebody else. Share with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Share with your the officer that is not is on duty right now that is, cannot make this place and say, this is what we learned today. So it's LTD, learn, teach, and do. So when you learn something, teach someone quickly and do it, and it sticks very well. So I think, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's been a pleasure having you, Captain Caleb. We really do appreciate this. Uh, we hope uh, we'll, we'll, when we call on you next time, you will be able to come for so that we can get more juice, more sauce and more juice from you as well. Uh, also, thank you very much for this. Huh? Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time as well. Thank you. So to, to everybody in the house, uh, Captain Sire, Captain Hansen, uh, Captain Anthony must have some rush now because we, I think we, we did some time in Warsaw together as well with uh, Captain Caleb. So he was there remembering some, some of those times we used to chance them. Uh, and everybody, Captain Olufemi, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Uh, let me see. Clem, uh, thank you. JJ, KCO, Oshanu, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, Lewis, NJ, Precious. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Shiobola. Thank you, Kamoye, Kamoyen, Mboto. Is it KM, right? Welcome. Thank you very much. And we'll see you guys uh, next week. See you guys next Thank week. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. See you guys next week. We will continue with our um, this thing next week. Eh? Um, Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Captain. Okay, bye. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, bye. 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 bye.